Okay, we're getting started here. It's uh, a little late. We're all tired Friday afternoon after so many activities and good afternoon and, and thank you everyone that is here um, for being here. Uh, and also thank you all the audience that is following us online. Uh, this session will also be recorded so it can be transmitted as well and hopefully we can add a lot of value in this in this conversation um, we are we're joined uh, here by mr hyun chul kim vice president of international affairs of the korea international trade association of, of kita it's uh, great to have you here mr kim thank you so much um, to my left, my good friend, Estefania La Terza, Vice Minister of Investments and Exports of, of Paraguay. Um, Mr. Marco Moya, uh, who is Under Secretary of Investments at the Ministry of Production and Foreign Trade, Investment and Fisheries of Ecuador. And, uh, and last but definitely not least, Mr. Sang Sun Kim, uh, Regional Director General for Central and South America, Head Office at the Korea Trade and Investment Promotion Agency, COTRA. Um, so again, good afternoon to everyone. It's a great pleasure, a privilege to be here in, in Seoul in the second day. So much energy, so many ideas, so many contacts, so much content uh, in that enormous potential um, of the relationship of trade and investment and integration between Korea and our region, Latin America and the Caribbean. It's just great to see all this happening this couple of days. And this afternoon, we're going to have a very re relaxed conversation, I would suggest, given the time of day. And uh, we're all looking forward to the great dinner that we will have later on uh, to keep talking as well. But our talk today is going to be about investment promotion and the importance of uh, these activities that all of us here, we carry out. That is really our, our glue, our common denominator uh, of many of the people here. We have even a representative from France, Philippe, welcome from Business France, also from the other side of the Atlantic for us that also interested in that. And of course, Cotra who, and Kita, and Cotra in particular has been for us uh, a reference, a benchmark, a, really a northern light to follow in many of the activities that this world-class agency does. We have analyzed in depth the impact of investment promotion and each dollar invested generates a multiple of uh, dollars in, in terms of um, deals generated, in terms of investment generated. So this is a very, very um, important conversation. Um, having uh, said that and without further ado, um, and to kick us off, I would like to turn over to uh, Mr. Kim, the Vice President of International Affairs Group at uh, KITA, at the Korea International Trade Association, for some welcome remarks. Mr. Kim, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests. Buenas tardes and encantado. Uh, I'm Hyun Chul Kim, Vice President for International Affairs at KITA, Korea International Trade Association. Uh, it is my great honor to deliver welcome remarks at the Trade Facilitation and Investment Attraction Seminar, which is about expanding business opportunities between Korea and the Latin America and Caribbean region. It is especially meaningful that the Korea Latin America Caribbean Business Summit is being held in person after two years of the COVID outbreak. At this important time, when we celebrate 60 years of Korea Latin America Caribbean diplomatic relations. As you may know, Korea and the Latin America Caribbean countries have substantially promoted cooperation in trade and investment based on our mutually beneficial economic structure. 
The Latin American Caribbean region has been a significant contributor to Korea's achievement of all-time high trade volume of $1 trillion. Korea's export to the Latin America Caribbean uh, stood at $25.8 billion in uh, 2021, 12 times the value of $2.1 billion, which is surpassed for the first time in 1990. For the same period, trade volume between the regions reached 54.2 billion in uh, 2021, 14 times the value of trade volume in uh, 1990. For the Latin America and Caribbean countries, Korea is the sixth largest import market and the seventh largest export destination. Now, to give some notable examples, Ecuador was the first country to import Hyundai's Pony automobiles from Korea in 1976. And the, uh, Panama was the first import of Samsung color TVs. Uh, all these examples illustrate that the Latin America uh, Caribbean countries have been valuable partners for Korea, uh, only in recognizing Korea's immense potentials. Not to mention, Korea's investment in the Latin America Caribbean have continued to grow, surpassing 10 billion in 2019. Though it temporarily declined in 2020 due to the pandemic, we are now witnessing a sustained recovery from 2021. Back in the mid-90s, Korean textile companies raced to enter the market to take advantage of United States textile quota policy. Since then, we are now seeing more diversifying investment from infrastructure to high end. Both Korea and the Latin America Caribbean region also have maintained a robust FTA network to strengthen and promote closer economic outlook, economic cooperation. Beginning with the Korea's very first FTA with Chile, Korea has signed multiple FTAs with Peru, Colombia, and five Central American countries. At this moment, Korea is under negotiations with Guatemala, Mercosur, and Ecuador. This March, we agreed to resume our negotiations with Mexico for the first time in 14 years. I believe both Korea and the Latin America Caribbean countries will be able to enjoy stronger trade and investment ties going forward. As I mentioned before, this year marks 60th anniversary of Korea's diplomatic relation with 15 Latin America Caribbean countries. Korea has a long established tradition which is called Hwangap of uh, throwing a grand feast to celebrate a person's 60th birthday. According to the traditional 60-year cycle of the lunar calendar, the number of 60 means accomplishing one big 60-year cycle and starting the next cycle in one's life. Celebrating the 60th anniversary, now is the time for Korea and the Latin America Caribbean countries to build a momentum for mutually beneficial and a stronger economic cooperation. Following the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the Latin America Caribbean countries have concentrated their effort on securing new driving forces of economic growth, improving infrastructure and achieving digital transformation. In this context, as Korea is a leader with a competitive edge in digital economy, startups, 5G and smart city. I expect that there will be countless opportunities already between our countries. I wish that today's seminar will serve as a venue where prominent experts in Korea, Latin America, Caribbean, trade and investment will share their insight on the proper directions for our regions to move forward together. Uh, with this, I'd like to conclude my remarks. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Mr. Kim, for your excellent remarks.
and for the next 60 years of uh, more and better business and cultural diplomacy between our regions. Thank you again those for the excellent remarks. Um, I now would like to turn it over to my good friend Estefania La Terza, a Vice Minister of Trade and Investment from the dear country of Paraguay. The floor is yours, Estefania. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mr. Jim. Good afternoon, Fabrizio. Uh, dear friends and colleagues here, thank you very much for having uh, given this space to Paraguay again. I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing a presentation right now, which will show what our uh, strategy for promote pro, for promoting investments in Paraguay is. Um, I will try to make it as short as possible. Looking forward to hearing your comments and maybe your questions so as to do or conduct a more dynamic uh, work here. So I don't who's got the um... Do we have the presentation? Uh, oh, there it is. Yes, it's coming yes. up. There we go. Okay, uh, next please. Oh, I have to go there. Yes. Okay. Um, or, or, or you can do it here. I think I can do it. Oops. Yeah, it works. Yes. We are okay then. Um, Paraguay has now uh, uh, agency uh, for promoting uh, investments and exports at the same time. So this is kind of a doable agency. Some countries have different models. In our case, we are uh, looking forward to promote both because we feel like uh, investments and, promo and, and exports are very connected. And mainly the kind of investments that we are attracting in Paraguay are uh, concentrated into the diversification of our production. And uh, we understand that being Paraguay, a country of only 7 million people, we are not a very interesting market in terms of consumption. Nonetheless, uh, since Paraguay is located amongst two big uh, South American economies, the most interesting thing is that investing in Paraguay, you can use a very friendly environment in order to access major markets. So this is, this is, the, um, this is, this is how I start uh, my presentation. And um, in this, in this, uh, in this um, photo, I'm, I'm showing uh, four elements which are key and vital in order to work with uh, investments. For us, it is very important to work on uh, business climate. If a country doesn't have the right environment to invest, nobody's gonna wanna come and do our business in there. So it has to be business friendly. Also, we are working on institutional building which means that we want to rely more into the institutions and uh, less into power. As you know, uh, governments change in every democratic system, Paraguay in, in that sense is no exception. So we always say that we need strong institutions so as to keep working on state policies, which will last more than one government. Also, we work very much or we concentrate into uh, client support which is what we normally do in order to start and finish a process, goes from the attention that we give to our, to our clients, let's just say people who are interested in investing, and um, uh, other people that might, be, uh, that might be interested in the future. So we go with them, we provide information, and then we uh, work with them all through the process of establishing in Paraguay and even during the first year of the operation. And also we are working or dealing with uh, investment promotion. That is very, very important point because if nobody knows what your uh, country is doing, no one is gonna be interested. When I first assumed the role of leading this agency, we, find out, we found out that Paraguay was a very, very unknown country. I mean, it's, uh, for some people in Paraguay, they tend to think that, okay, Paraguay, it's a country that has uh, at least known for different uh, negative negative situations. Although working or traveling around the world, what I found out is that most people tell me, okay, where is Paraguay? I've never seen a person from Paraguay before. Or either when I go to the airport, I just stamp my, my, my passport and they say, oh, this is the first time that I see this passport. What exactly is Paraguay? So uh, what we first had to do is to try to, not only to uh, promote Paraguay in a, in a positive way, but also to make it or put it on the map and even more put it on the business map, which is not the same. 
So uh, we understood that for us to start with our promotion work, it was very important to work on the business climate. As I said before, if there is no friendliness in our, in our climate, there is no way to attract an investment. If somebody comes to your country and start a, 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 an enterprise, they start an industry, and it doesn't work because the road is, is bulky, it's, it's, it's full of obstacles, then what is going to happen that these capitals are going to uh, do their, their pack their bags and they're going to leave. So we started a process in 2004 where we started with a new economic ruling. We decided to organize, to keep the house organized in order to uh, make it friendlier, for, for, for especially for foreign people and also for, for national capitals. Because if somebody who lives in a country trusts the country and the institutions and they work well and they do their business and things are going right, then other people from outside are going to be able to come and do the same. We need to create a trustworthy environment for national and international investments. In terms of investment promotions, we work very hard on the storytelling. We have to build our own story. Today, everything is about this. It's, it's about doing the script. It's about telling people, especially those who don't know the country, what is countries like, what are the advantages, what are we doing, what we are projecting to do to make it attractive. I mean, it's not just a matter of going around and uh, telling, I mean, we are growing, we are doing well, these are our numbers. It's also a, a, a construction of the story that is appealing. We try to create, in this sense, uh, uh, we promote our country brand as well, meaning that we try to create sensations associated with the country name. It's like when you have a, a nice experience somewhere, it doesn't matter how the, the place really is. What matters is how you feel there. So this is what we're trying to create, not only through the experience of what we say, what we call the Paraguay experience, but also we try to create the sensations with the products that put, we put in international markets. If you go to Switzerland and you consume, let's say, an organic sugar that has a, a good package, packaging that it's uh, well worked on and it's a good product, then you're going to start thinking as the country with a positive point of view. This is very important. So what we do here is not only uh, a storytelling building, we also create uh, the country brand using elements to promote the country. So we market, we, we, we do a lot of, of marketing trying to make the country more known. Also, we do a lot of environment reading, which is connected with market intelligence. There is no way to try to promote investments if you don't know what you're looking for. All investments are not the same. We are looking here for triple impact investments. We want good businesses, healthy businesses, not just any business. We want to, what we're doing in Paraguay is we are creating a good environment. We are offering incentives, but we do all this in order to attract the type of investments that we want. We want to take, I mean, different sort of businesses all over the country. We don't just want to work around the central region, which is the most populated one. We want to take a business everywhere, these healthy businesses, and we want to create jobs, quality jobs. We want to give people opportunities. This is what we want. And this is the portion that uh, we are ready to resign to certain uh, amounts of money in terms of taxes but with the condition of creating these good jobs that I'm referring to. So uh, we do a lot of uh, client support. We do a very person-to-person -person work. For us, every investment is in important. It's not just that we are interested in big investments and we just forget about the small ones. Every person that gives us a call is a person who's gonna receive a red carpet service. We work for them. Uh, normally, when you, when you talk to the investors, they tell you that it, it, your investment depends on who's waiting for you in the airport. If you get a bad experience at the airport, then probably the person is not going to invest in the country. So what we make sure of is that everyone that uh, reaches us uh, knows that it's going to receive a red carpet treatment. And this is not only during the process of the investment landing. It is all over the process and it finishes with the aftercare services, which is the kind of, of thing that we normally do. It's like when uh, somebody starts a new business and they give us a call and say, okay, I'm having problems with certain institution. We're not getting a paper that we need in order to move on, 
or to export, we jump in and we work with them in order to find a solution. So we do it personally, we do it uh, from one person to another, we make it very personal. For us, this is the, uh, this uh, 360 support is key to, to, to investments. So um, this strategy based uh, on these on this, uh, principles and or these developments are really giving us very good results. And you can see those projected into these numbers. As you see, uh, between 2004, which is when we started this process of reforming our, our economy in order to set the base, and uh, next. Thank you. So um, these are the numbers I was taught, taught, uh, telling about. As you can see, the FDI grew by 12.9% uh, annually. This is an average number. It's an uh, average annual variation between uh, 2004 and 2020. Also, this is very connected with the growth of our exports, which grew by almost 10%, 0.6 uh, uh, to be more precise. So these numbers show that what we're doing here, we are doing right. We are going in the right direction. In order to keep growing and to keep this number, which is 4.2 in, in GDP growth, uh, we need to, to, to keep on going and we need to, to improve what we're doing. We know that we are far from perfect, but I think we're going in the right direction. So as for uh, business climate, and normally in Paraguay, we, are, uh, we, we tend to have sometimes a very uh, negative perception of ourselves. This is, this is something very common. When you go to Paraguay, you hear some people saying, but here in Paraguay, we are a land of country. It is very difficult to export. Uh, Paraguayan workers are not, uh, the, the, most, uh, the most reliable people and that kind. So we are trying to change that perception. It is very important to start with our, your own people, trying to gain a confidence in yourself and what you can do. Paraguay is really a country of opportunities and when you take a look at the region, you know that we have really an amazing environment. Everything is possible, but we, what, what we have to do first is convince our own people that we can do it. So when they talk about landlockedness and say, okay, Paraguay is not, it's landlocked. We don't have access to the sea. That makes everything harder. We just go and say, but Paraguay is a hub in construction. We have a lot of, we are an, uh, interlinkages between different regions. There are several regions around, I mean, the inside of Brazil, as you know, Brazil is a continent, it's not a country, where several regions are closer to, uh, they, are, they are landlocked as well because for them to travel to the, to the ports takes forever, same as for Paraguay, but they are right in the middle and they still need to move their economies. So what we need to do here is interlink. So we are investing a lot in infrastructure, we are connecting dots, and we wanna see ourselves right now as a point between the Atlantic and the Pacific. And new roads that go through the continents where you have a lot of settlements and faster, uh, fast, fast growing cities there are in need of several goods and services and developments as well. So this is important to note. Also, when we say about, okay, we're only 7 million people, yes, 7 million people, which makes us very, very simple and flexible. Because when you're a, a small country and a centralized country, things are done easy, easily. Also, when you talk about geography and some people think, okay, no, we are conditioned by our geography, we just say our geography is an advantage. We are not a big size country if you compare with Argentina or you compare with Brazil. But if you compare with Korea, Korea is four times smaller than Paraguay. And look at what you've been able to accomplish. So when you know how to do things, then uh, size doesn't matter. So with all these elements, we are working on our uh, script, our storytelling. First of all, we talk about our location and market access. Uh, we talk a lot, um, normally when we do these uh, uh, presentations, what we refer to is trying to show this map when you see all the populations that you have in the countries that around Paraguay. So in brief, you can pro produce in a very simple environment, in an easy environment where you have a lot of incentives and yet you have huge markets around that you can access easily 
and under very good conditions due to the partnerships uh, made in Mercosur. So we are a part of Mercosur and to countries in Mercosur we can export at zero tax. So it is really convenient when it comes to business. Also what we remark a lot is the stability. It might be something very, not very special maybe in this region, but as you see in, in, in Latin America, sometimes when you change government, every rule, every single rule changes. That doesn't happen in Paraguay. We tend to keep things steady and you know that our policies are gonna pass from one government to another and that creates a very safe place for environment, uh, environment for uh, businesses, for doing business. Also, we talk about our macroeconomic discipline. As you see, our numbers are very healthy. Our inflation is always uh, one of the lowest in the region. Uh, before the pandemic, we were about um, a 4% inflation uh, average. Right now, of course, we are around nine, but still, if you compare with the region, it's still the lowest in, so in, 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 all the, in all the area. So we are doing okay. We hope that right now things are gonna change. Last year, even being a pandemic year, we were able to grow by 5%. So this is the result of our, of our work into the uh, macroeconomic uh, uh, environment. We talk about security. Your investment is, is secure in Paraguay. Once you do your, your business there, you know that the conditions that you had at the moment of the planning are gonna subsist under, under, under uh, these conditions. It is very easy to know when you're gonna get your return back and when you're gonna start having the, the, uh, your revenues. And uh, of course, it's very easy to plan. We also talk about incentives. There are several laws that provides the investors incentives. We have a very competitive uh, system this is something that impressed very well to, um, to, our, to, our, to our fellows, those that come to Paraguay. We normally say that we have a triple 10. Let's just say triple 10 is like that we have 10% uh, uh, VAT, uh, personal, personal tax, and also uh, uh, utilities. So this is uh, really something that appeals very much because it's the lowest, uh, the lowest tax action in all the regions. If you see, this is a, compar a comparison between Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, and Chile. And Paraguay is the lowest, has the lowest taxes. Also, this is very important. We normally uh, say that in Paraguay, 70% uh, of the population is under 40, which means that you have a lot of uh, uh, youth uh, demographic bonus. These people are very keen to learn. What they're looking forward is to have an opportunity to show what they can do. This is a very uh, a talented bunch of people. We know that uh, because when we talk to, to, to different businesses that are working in Paraguay, we talk to them and they said, okay, I'm very, very happy. Paraguay is really doing great. And uh, we love these people working for us because they think of the business as themselves. It's not like I'm working for a company. I'm not working for a boss. What they normally say is that I'm working for my company. So a Paraguayan worker thinks as a company he's working for us if it was his. And this is very important because it changes things. When they do things, they are happy. They are like showing that they do it because they like to do it and they like to feel a part of this kind of, 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 of industry. So this is very important. Um, also, we refer to expanding business sectors. Mm -hmm. Expanding business sectors. We have, of course, the food producer. Paraguay is a big food producer. It's uh, uh, creative industries are also booming. The pharmaceutical sector as well. So we know very well that the revenue is gonna come fast in these growing sectors. Uh, as you can see, these numbers show how these industries and these sectors have been growing in the last year. These are really, really good numbers because it shows that even in the year 2021, which wasn't a good year, we were able to grow even at, at two digits in these uh, sectors. Paraguay also is a world-class food, uh, food producer and energy, clean energy producer, which is another asset for industries looking forward to land their investments. And of course, we provide all sorts of business facilitation uh, uh, business facilitation all the time. So we are improving our system, our platforms and everything. And what is more important, important is that when you go to Paraguay, you find this factor, what we call the age factor. What is the age factor? The human factor. Paraguay is not only a country where you can go and produce and get your money back and go away. It's a country where you can do business, 
where you can expand your business, where you can live, where you can have a very satisfactory experience. So that's why the difference is the people. You go to Paraguay, you're going to feel welcome. That's why we always insist. A month ago, we did a big investment forum. We said, okay, we're not going to do it virtually. We're going to do it person in person. We're going to bring the people to Paraguay so they can see what is Paraguay like. Because Paraguay is a country that you don't just know in the paper. You have to live it. You have to experience it. So this brings me to the, uh, uh, the last part of my presentation. This is our motto here, big or small. Your business matters. This is to indicate to people interested in coming to Paraguay they're going to be received, that they're going to have all the attention they need, and that we're going to provide this caring system uh, and providing this, this, this support from the beginning to the end. And thank you very much. Thank you, Stefania, for that really excellent presentation. After the triple 10, the age factor, the sensations that you experience in your country. Uh, if you don't want to go to Paraguay, something is wrong. Uh, because really, it's such an excellent presentation. We, di we did a big event uh, three weeks ago in Paraguay with more than 2,000 people from 48 countries and uh, generated hundreds of millions of dollars in investments. And really, it's a country that we see all the countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. We like them all. Uh, but the recovery of Paraguay, the resilience of Paraguay in the pandemic has been really a shining star in, in the region, a country of opportunities. And I hope all the Koreans that are listening to this really take into account uh, these wonderful opportunities in Paraguay. Having said that, um, we now um, turn it to uh, Kotra, um, who, as I said before, is a, or does uh, Undersecretary Moya first? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Undersecretary. Uh, we go from uh, Paraguay to Ecuador then, and then, then we will finish with Cotra. Uh, and uh, Undersecretary Moya, the floor is yours to talk about your country in the middle of the hemisphere, Ecuador. Uh, thank you, Fabricio. I'm going to talk. I will speak in Spanish because we need a different feeling because it's um, um, Korea and LATAC, LATAM Business Center. Um, okay, the name is Ecuador Open for Business. Ecuador está abierto a inversiones. And Ecuador, more Ecuador. Ecuador is open for business. Ecuador in the world and the world in Ecuador. What does this mean? We've spent 2020 and we decided that we will create new change and that we will create a new brand for Ecuador and that is open for business. And we work with IDV in order to attract various investment. And first, I would like to show you what Ecuador has to offer to the world. In markets, in the coffee that you share every morning, in the chocolate that you enjoy, in the fishing, or in the most beautiful roses, in endless premium products. Every country that receives a container exported from Ecuador receives the products of a prosperous land of vast seas. It receives quality, good practices, and traceability. It receives honest work, our main source of well-being. At Pro Ecuador, we are committed in bringing more of Ecuador to the world. If you're looking for organic and sustainable food, Ecuador has it. If you're looking for art, fashion, and crafts, Ecuador has it. If you're looking for an ecosystem that's safe for your investments, Ecuador has it. If you're looking for the best, Ecuador definitely has it. Okay, con este video podemos ver todo lo que podemos so through the video, you were able to see what uh, benefits Ecuador has that it can provide to the world. And Ecuador has uh, many points that can attract uh, foreign investors, but this may lead to some complicate 
It might be a bit uh, complicated for you to understand. Ecuador is strategically located for trade. We are direct. We have direct access from the Pacific Ocean, and you can also take advantage of the Panama Canal uh, and thus uh, reach countries in Europe. Also, you can utilize the Pacific Ocean to have access to Japan, Korea, and China, and uh, it's uh, quite close. Uh, closer than you think. And just as Paraguay a Vice Minister mentioned uh, their inflation rate to talk about Ecuador's inflation rate, we uh, are using dollar as our currency and that is and our inflation rate is lower than most countries, 3.9%. So considering the situation around the world such as COVID and also the uh, war invasion of Russia into Ukraine, our inflation rate is quite low. And we think that our inflation rate will be maintained at the current level. And so this is quite interesting. And it is an attractive point for other countries. So how can we then attract investment into lack countries? As of fiscal year 2020, Ecuador was able to attract 1.1 billion in FDI, but in 2021, it was only 600 million. So here, what should we look at? We believe that this is quite worrisome. What is happening? Some countries are seeing increase in FDI. However, our neighboring countries are showing similar trends, and we need to turn the situation around. In order to turn the situation around, what must be done? Uh, let's take a look at foreign direct investment in relation to GDP first. For Ecuador, it's just 0.6 percent. Therefore, we need to focus on increasing foreign direct investment related uh, to our GDP. We need to uh, read and understand what is needed, and we need to attract uh, foreign uh, direct investment. We cannot uh, generate foreign currency from elsewhere, so we need to attract it through foreign direct investment. And there can be many activities related to foreign direct investment, such as manufacturing, business service, mining, construction, commerce, and transportation, storage, and communication. So some more points about Ecuador. Uh, some policies that we have adopted to attract foreign investment. Uh, we have a strategy of Ecuador competes. So we have this brand, Ecuador competes, as our strategy in order to attract investment. Ecuador competes. This is our slogan. And we have three factors supporting Ecuador competes. It is Ecuador production. Ecuador Global and Ecuador Innovate. So Ecuador Global is being more open to the market. We're trying to open up new markets. And in the past, we wanted uh, we were strong, for example, in uh, horticulture such as roses and chocolate, and we are not going to just uh, be exporting traditional chocolate, but uh, uh, more interesting new types of chocolate. And going on to our uh, production side, we can lower our production cost, and we have a variety of uh, forms, so it's a one-stop shop for investors, and we also have good financing. We also have traceability. You can know where certain products are coming from. And we have great institutions set up to support production. Next on public-private cooperation. We cannot do everything on our own. We need to work with the private sector. We have set up a task force to strengthen our policies, yet receive support from the private sector. I talked about low production costs, and this is possible because of 
various uh, cost competitive incentives such as energy and fuel uh, tax incentives and so forth this which can provide advantages to investors also we have a one-stop shop for investors it's quite fundamental in how it is made up in the case of uh, Ecuador uh, we understand what is needed for investment and uh, we believe that uh, the entire process has to be streamlined it has to be simple that is why we eradicated all unnecessary procedures and regulations we eliminated unnecessary procedures and uh, we have simplified our formalities and uh, we have a technology adequacy and we now have a digital process you can have access to all of these organizations via our one-stop shop for investors and this is already that this has already been set up and is in operation then what does Ecuador global mean <clears throat> So it is about providing proper services required by local uh, global investors and uh, global businesses. We believe that Ecuador Global is also extremely important for attracting a foreign investment. And uh, let's look at some of the trade agreements. So what is indicated in green, they have already been ratified and uh, the others are what are being negotiated, the orange and the blue are agreements in which we require negotiations. So currently, we ha are discussing uh, striking a, a trade agreement with Korea. And uh, we also um, have started negotiations with Mexico, Costa Rica, China, and South Korea. And uh, in the future, we plan to have um, negotiations for a FTA with Canada, Dominican Republic, Pacific Alliance, Israel, Panama, Turkey, and the uh, United States. If we are able to um, have these FTAs, then we can expand our markets. If we are just limited in our trade with a handful of countries, we cannot attract more investors. That is why it is important to, to uh, make Ecuador more global. In addition, we also have bilateral investment protection treaties, and uh, there is uh, such uh, um, uh, this is a legal tool in which you can receive support. Uh, for promoting and inquiries and conflict resolutions around investment. Now on how we have grown thus far. Our major um, in destinations uh, for non-oil -ex non exports is China, first uh, market, and the second uh, following closely behind is United States, European Union, Russia, and Colombia. And our biggest export is actually a shrimp and uh, bananas and uh, um, Roses and fresh flowers are other products that we are uh, exporting. And canned fish products are another major export item. So next, this is about the evolution of our non-oil exports. So you can see that it has constantly been growing from 18 to 2019. Uh, you will see that it was 6.4 billion in 2018, and it increased to uh, 10 billion in 20 uh 22. So you will see that there has been a steady growth in our exports. Next, on how investment can be protected when you invest in Ecuador. Uh, we believe that this will provide a compelling story for potential investors. First, there is reduc reduction of income tax of 3%. 3% reduction of the income tax, which gives Ecuador more competitiveness. And did the investment contracts, the ones that have been approved, approved from 2012 to 2021, is shown here. You will see uh, the changes. Last year, in November, we had the brand open for business, Ecuador open for business. And from 2012 to 2021, we were able to increase the number of contracts. And we only had 67 contracts in 2021. But if in just the four months of 2022, this increased to 161. So the 
sudden increase in the investment contract shows that we were able to uh, persuade investors to invest in Ecuador. And now let's take a look at uh, the areas, the sectors in which uh, investments were made into mining, industrial, energy, agriculture are the major industries. And uh, would you please take a look at this part? <coughs> Fiscal year 2021 and 2022, uh, we were able to increase the uh, investment uh, from 67 to 161, and we create Open for Business International. And so we uh, were able to um, have discussions and uh, we have these um, types of uh, meetings in Peru, China, Chile, Uruguay, and we will have such uh, Ecuador open for business types of uh, um, meetings. And uh, we are going to hold it very soon in New York and next year in the UK. So we have a new uh, strategy and uh, we have a very good ecosystem. So we are trying trying to have a cooperation and a co-work between the pro public organizations and the private sector. The government has to support, uh, and uh, it's not meaningful if the government just uh, provides a framework but does not support uh, the private and public partnerships. And uh, it is important uh, that the government establishes uh, strategic policies and uh, the government uh, creates uh, strategies uh, based on work with public organizations and institutions in various fields and we understand that uh, we need to have a, a lot of strategies and work in the areas such as coffee and processed products, textile fashion, uh, forest industries, uh, chocolate, and so forth. We understand that we can be stronger when we work together, and we also have a strategy to strengthen SMEs. So. Finally, why should you be investing in Ecuador? First of all, we are we have a dollarized economy, thus it leads to a lower inflation. And we have political, economic, and fiscal stability. Also, we have uh, a, a lot of oil exports. And so we're an export-oriented economy. We provide various tax incentives. Uh, we can support with the highly qualified human resources. And we also have geographic and logistics advantages. If you visit Quito, you will uh, feel that your heart beats more uh, when you come to Quito. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marco, Under Secretary Moya, for that excellent presentation. Uh, I am witness firsthand of the potential of Ecuador. We have been working with Ecuador, a very cr close ally and partner. The uh, forum, Open for Business, was the largest during the pandemic uh, held, and it's a country that really has a lot of potential and a very business-friendly administration as well. Um, I now have will turn it over, yes, <laughs> to uh, our good friend Sang Sung Kim uh, from uh, um, Kotra, who will present uh, on this very important and, as I said, this benchmark a promotion agency, world-class agency, I would say. I have to excuse myself for a, just a few minutes. I have to give some awards, but Esperanza will uh, join me here to moderate any Q&A. Some uh, of the SMEs startups, they want some awards, and uh, they want me to go and give them, and I'll be right back. So Esperanza, you can join here. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sang Sun Kim, uh, Regional Director General for Cotra Latin America and Caribbean region. I'm very pleased to be in this seminar to talk about that, uh, trade and investment opportunities between Korea and LAC. 
Okay, during the presentation, I'd like to talk about five subjects. Uh, first will be the introduction of a relationship between Korea and LAC, and then business opportunities with, LAC, uh, with Korea and with LAC. After that, I'll talk about the main areas of cooperation and COTRA as a gateway to improve business cooperation. Okay, our relationship has been growing positively through the years. And this year is very important for our relationship uh, since Korea celebrates 60th anniversary of uh, diplomatic relationships with many uh, large countries such as Mexico, Argentina, Chile, Paraguay, Ecuador, Colombia, Panama, Dominican Republic, and Guatemala. And while in 2019, uh, we celebra celebrate with Brazil, and next year, we're going to celebrate with Peru. Okay, uh, Korea trade with the LAC region also has been growing, and reaching in 2021, 20, uh, total trade amount of uh, $53 billion, with a share of uh, almost a 4.2% uh, of Korea's uh, total trade with the world. In terms of exports, the amount reached uh, $25 billion with an annual increase rate of uh, 38%. And in terms of uh, imports, yeah, the amount uh, reached about 20, $28 billion uh, with an increase rate of uh, 39% uh, compared to to that the previous year. Uh, I'd like to you know, highlight that uh, our imports uh, has been in uh, constant growth uh, since uh, 2017 with a CAGR of 10.6%. Uh, uh, this means the Korea has uh, played an uh, important role for that uh, uh, export increase of lack of reason. Uh, let's see uh, Korea's top trade partners. Our in a top five uh, uh, destination is Mexico with a share of uh, 46%, Brazil with uh, 18%, 19%, Chile 6%, Panama 6%, Colombia and uh, 4%. In terms of imports, our in a top five uh, import partner is Mexico with a share of 28%, followed by Brazil with 24%, Chile 17%, Peru 12%, uh, and Argentina 7%. Well, regarding the export products, about 70% of the total amount is a focus on the five categories electrical machinery and equipment, vehicles and auto parts, machinery, iron, steel, and plastics. In terms of import products in 2021, about 70% goes to that uh, two categories. One is that the minerals, including ores and mineral fuels and copper. The other one is agricultural products including uh, cereals and uh, residues from food industries. Uh, Korea's FDA amount to the world has been growing uh, from $45 billion in 2017 to $76 billion in 2021. Well, Korean companies uh, has had uh, a big interest in Latin American region FTA amount is been, uh, has been growing from $7 billion from, uh, in 2017 to $13 billion in 2021. Okay, we can see that uh, uh, FTI uh, amount by sector. About the 70% goes to that uh, two categories, manufacturing, 
and mining, and FTI in manufacturing, was uh, mainly intended for expanding markets and reducing costs, while FTI in mining is um, the main intended for that, uh, the securing uh, supply of that, uh, natural resources. On the right uh, diagrams, we can see that the uh, manufacturing FTI uh, by sector also about 70% goes to two categories, automobile and trailer and primary matters. Okay, from this slide, I'll talk about the, some uh, business opportunities. According to the IMF, in 2021, uh, South Korea was the 10th largest economy in the world and the fourth in Asia. Innovation, one of the ways in which Korea has managed to position itself as a, a country with it, uh, global uh, competitiveness has been in big investment innovation. In, 2020, uh, in 2021, Korea was selected as the most innovative country in the world for the seventh time in the last nine years by Bloomberg. This was mainly because of uh, uh, world top patent, uh, patent activity, value added manufacturing, R&D intensity, and high tech density. With a strong trade and investment network through 18 free trade agreements, Korea has been trying to improve the uh, national economy and also uh, compete and enter more easily uh, in the uh, global market. Until now, Korea has uh, FTAs with uh, uh, large countries such as Central America, Chile, Colombia, and Peru. And currently, Korea is in the process of negotiating new FTAs or preparing for talks with the Mercosur, Pacific Alliance, and Mexico, Guatemala, and Ecuador. According to the World Bank, Korea is ranked fifth top country with a high ease of doing business. As you see, global market share of uh, Korea's key industries, Korea is leading the, the market, global market, in the fields of uh, display, uh, semiconductors, electronics, electric vehicle battery, and shipbuilding. Uh, besides, Korea has a world-class industrial uh, capabilities in the fields of uh, automobiles, uh, chemicals, and ICT, and beauty. And nowadays, the Korean government is uh, focus, focusing on strengthening competitiveness in the new industries, such as biotechnology and aerospace. Okay, from now on, I, I'd like to talk about some opportunities in, in the LAC region. FDI amount in LAC region reached $134 billion in 2021. Top five recipients are Brazil with a share of 38%, Mexico 24%, and Chile 10%, Colombia 7%, Argentina 5%. In terms of uh, FTI uh, amount by sector of uh, greenfield projects, top five sectors are information and communication, energy and gas supply, automotives and transportation storage, financial and insurance. Nearshoring is to relocate supply chains shifting from Asia to a location close to the point of destination which will uh, bring benefits to large countries. This can be also 
uh, benefits to Korea if Korean companies uh, use this uh, kind of like a new trend of uh, uh, reconfiguration of supply chains strategically. According to uh, IDB a report, New Shoring could add an annual $78 billion in additional exports of goods and services in Latin America in the near and medium term. Uh, these industries, including mining, automotive, and renewable energy and ICT, also could be a good opportunities for trade and investment for lack of reason. Yeah, from now on, I'd like to talk about some main areas of uh, possible cooperation. R&D is a, a key to the development of a Korean economy, with that, uh, Korea being placed as a second leading country just behind Israel in terms of R&D spending as a share of GDP. Through technology transfer and R&D cooperation, Latin American and Caribbean countries could have technical competitiveness, especially in the sector. Uh, where it's uh, uh, far from the uh, technology frontiers. Korea's cooperation in the Latin America region is a focus on the ICT and e-government. And as a, a digital a transformation is getting uh, more important in the fourth industrial uh, uh, revolution era, I think there will be you know, uh, many uh, investment and the business opportunities in the areas such, area such as smart cities, artificial intelligence, and smart factories. Renewable energy is one of the strong industries in Latin American region. Uh, with uh, renewable energy capacity reaching 261 gigawatts with a share of 9.3% uh, in the world. And renewable energy sector in Latin America uh, continues growing as the region's governments have a committed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So I think that there will be you know, plenty of uh, opportunities uh, for that, uh, you know, organizing uh, renew renewable energy projects and or as well as uh, supplying that uh, relevant equipment. Mining. Latin America uh, has become the most important uh, destination for investment in mining. Uh, Latin America produces many materials and has abundant reserves of uh, valuable mines, Korean companies and yeast, such as lithium, nickel, copper, and niobium, and etc. So there will be also you know, plenty of opportunities for investment. Automotive industry is one of the main industries to make a business. With Mexico and Brazil being placed as the uh, top 10 vehicle producers in the world. And Mexico has been the main recipient of uh, Korean investment due to USMCA. And now, uh, with the Inflation Reduction Act of US, Korean companies need to consider Mexico more strategically as the uh, investment destination. From now on, I'd like to talk about uh, COTRA as a gateway to improve business cooperation. COTRA was established about uh, 60 years ago to uh, contribute to the development of a Korean economy by implementing trade and investment promotion activities with 128 uh, offices located in 83 countries 
including 12 countries in Latin America. Cotra serves as a global business platform tailored to meet the needs of buyers, investors, and Korean entrepreneurs. Cotra delivers diverse customized marketing services and opportunities to Korean SMEs for global market by implementing business matchmaking, trade delegation, ex exhibitions and conventions, and by Korea, which is global e-marketplace. Kotra also delivers global partnering service, helping Korean and foreign companies to find ideal partners to strengthen their global value chain through diverse services like uh, global partnering in the field of R&D, Korean Auto Parts Plaza in the field of automobile parts, and uh, industry-specific exhibitions and showcases. For inbound investment promotion, one organization called Invest Korea was established as a part of COTRA that provides support services for foreign investment in Korea. IK Invest Korea provides uh, diverse services like one stop service for entire investment process, Invest Korea Week Forum and Invest Korea Plaza facility service offering space and administrative service to support foreign investors early settlement and etc. For outbound investment support, we provide seminars and consultations across the border MA support and so on. Sustainable growth is one of the uh, important values that Cotra pursues, helping uh, global society uh, grow together. We provide global HR partner service and intergovernmental partnership service, such as knowledge sharing program, uh, which is the program that provides consulting and training service in collaboration with uh, foreign government. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the, the global market information. Uh, based on the market information collected by uh, global networks, the Kutra serves as a global business think tank in Korea. Well, this is all my, uh, I have. And as I mentioned, we have uh, 12 offices in the Latin American region. And we are ready to talk and discuss and collaborate with the local governments and uh, private companies for any subject, for any uh, cooperation. So please contact us anytime. Thank you very much. Kansaimida, Director Kim, thank you very much for such an enlightened presentation. Thank you for uh, the presentations of by Vice Minister La Terza and Under Secretary Moya. And now I would like to open the, the floor for questions from the audience. If any one of you have a question to any of our distinguished panelists, this is the time. I know probably you're, you're dying to ask many questions, but we just have a couple minutes. So if there's a question, uh, you can address it directly to the panelists. Or, or um, if there is no questions, we can we can adjourn the session. That means the presentations were very clear. <laughs> thank you very much for participating. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we have a question here. If you can give him a, a microphone, thank you. Hello, everybody. So my name is uh, Philippe Ivernio from uh, Business France, but I'm uh, representing today uh, Haiti, with whom uh, we are working now. Um, 
thanks for the presentation. It was really uh, very impressing, impressive. Uh, as uh, as Fabricio said, uh, we wish we could invest in Paraguay or in Ecuador, <laughs> listening to what you said. Uh, I have though a question. We we have talked a lot uh, yesterday and today about LAC as a Latin American Caribbean, but mostly I should say uh, focused on the Latin American uh, countries, uh, South America, not so much on uh, Central or the Caribbean. So I have a question, possibly maybe uh, more for uh, Mr. Kim, uh, which is how do you see uh, the position of the Caribbean uh, region within LAC uh, and its potential to attract uh, new uh, investment and especially new Korean investment in the future? Would you like to address the question, Mr. Kim? Thank you. Uh, so your question about that uh, Korea, uh, Korea can uh, attract the investment from uh, Caribbean region or vice versa? That's, uh, that's, uh, vice versa. Uh, do you think any potential for Korean companies in, uh, in the Caribbean area, either for uh, exporting or for investing in the Caribbean region? Uh, yes, of course. That uh, we already you know, invested in some areas in Caribbean region, for example, uh, Dominican Republic and our uh, ID. Uh, because it's an ID, there are very cheap and uh, uh, abundant labor forces. So, uh, several you know, uh, Korean uh, companies in the field of the, the textiles, they already you know, have. Uh, uh, several and large in you know, uh, manufacturing uh, textile manufacturing in you know, factories there, and also Santo, Dom uh, Santo Domingo and the uh, Dominican Republic also that uh, some Korean companies uh, I know that uh, already had the uh, base uh, manufacturing basis in Dominican Republic. So, well, uh, actually that in those areas uh, because it's uh, uh, Central uh, like uh, Caribbean and Central uh, American countries uh, have that uh, some. Uh, we went with the uh, USA and and those uh, the textile manufacturing in there that uh, can be exported to the USA without any taxes. So you know Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, and also the, the Central, I don't know, I mean the, the Caribbean countries. A lot of you know, Korean textile companies already entered there and uh, manufactured a lot of you know, textile to export to USA. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Is there any other question? Don't be shy. <laughs> uh, if there's no more questions, I think we can uh, say thank you to our panelists, to our presenters with a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.